And now to a new study out tonight that says the world's first genetically modified babies may be at a higher risk of premature death. The research found that the genetic mutation used by a Chinese researcher on a human embryo to create HIV-resistant twins may be linked to a shorter lifespan. The findings from scientists at University of California, Berkeley, would likely intensify criticism that the Chinese researcher in question carried out an experiment on humans long before the science was ready. We take an inside look at the research published today in the journal Nature Medicine in tonight's Spotlight. And joining us tonight is a co-author of the study and professor of integrative biology at UC Berkeley, Rasmus Nielsen. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time, Professor. Uh, we can touch on the ethics of gene editing in a few moments, uh, if that would be okay. But first, I, I want to talk about the science here. Your study seems to indicate that, at least in this case, that the risk may not be worth the reward. Well, what we did was we looked at the database of people in the UK that had almost half a million people. And then we compared people in that database that had two copies of this mutation. So one inherited from their mother and one from their father. We compared those people to all other people in the database. And what we were able to show was that the people that had two copies of the mutation, they have a 21% increase in mortality rate. That means that in average, they will live 1.9 years uh, have a short 1.9 years shorter lifespan than other people. Professor, should the Chinese researcher conducting the experiments here, such as these and in gene editing, um, is this something that he should be done? Should be doing? Should this be done? And is science ready for experiments like these? Well, the thing, I think there's a whole host of reasons why you do not want to do uh, experiments like this uh, on the germline, that is uh, by modifying embryos that are then implanted into women. First of all, uh, it's just simply too risky. There can be what's called off-target effects. Second of, uh, of all, we don't really know a lot of the time what the effect is of a particular mutation we uh, induce. So in this particular case, for example, this mutation might help protect you against HIV. But then there are the negative effects of the mutation as well. For example, it might increase mortality during influenza infections. All our study shows that the overall effect is negative, that you have a shorter lifespan. And it sort of illustrates the danger of messing with uh, our germline, our, the DNA of, uh, of unborn, uh, that there's a big risk that we induce mutations but that we don't really know what the long-term effect of those mutations will be. Uh, that goes to my point now. What do you say to the opponents out there who feel that science shouldn't be meddling in God's work? Well, I don't know about that. And I can also say that there are some good uses of CRISPR. For example, there are trials now to, uh, to cure sickle cell anemia. So people that are born with certain genetic diseases, you can fix them using CRISPR technology, using this type of gene editing. And I think that good uses of, of gene editing uh, for, uh, for those kind of purposes. So I don't think gene editing, when it's done on adults, where you take some of their cell out of mm -hmm. their body, then you gene edit those cells and put them back in. To me, that's not different than any other medical intervention where you have to weigh the cost and benefits. Is this really worthwhile? Will this benefit the patient? But the germline editing, that done on embryos, I see as something quite different that's quite uh, a bit more risky and also, of course, have many other ethical issues associated with it. Very quickly, does that put the entire merging field of gene editing at risk when you have people doing experiments like these which are not widely accepted? Well, I think that experiment was reckless. It makes uh, gene editing look very bad, but I should emphasize again, there are many other good uses of gene editing. All right, Rasmus Nielsen, well, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank <laughs> you.